Greg from Oathbound Gaming coming back at you today again with an early access game called Pray for the Gods. Let me start by asking you a question. You ever had a PlayStation 2 and played a game called Shadow of the Colossus? Well, that is essentially what this game is. It is Shadow of the Colossus on Steam. Pray for the Gods is all about scaling bosses a hundred thousand times larger than your character, finding their weak points, inflicting damage where you can, and taking them down. So let's see what this game's like. Let's see if we can take down some gods today. Let's go! All right, the title screen. So when we go to new game here, we'll see four difficulties and boost in survival. The difficulties will determine whether or not cold will kill you, whether or not you regain, regenerate health, and if you'll drown in water if you're out of stamina. This also affects the damage that enemies do to your character as well. So there's a great deal of difference between the game's difficulty levels. At the bottom here, we have boost and survival. Boost and survival determines hunger and exhaustion and cold-related features of the game. Hunger and exhaustion is a lot more impactful on your character, along with freezing, if you're playing on survival. So if you like that, those type of survival games where food and warmth and, and sleeping matters more, survival is going to be the mode you want to play on. I'm going to play on boost because I want to show a little bit more. It's a little bit more of the combat, but you'll still see the survival aspects as well. Let's get started. This is about mm, three minutes into the game, right after the first little tutorial cave area. I chose this spot because we're getting close to a fight. I want to show you guys. Here I pick berries from a bush, and those can be used to refill your hunger bar, which can then uh, help restore and regenerate some of your health. That little white circle that you see that's emptying and now regenerating, that is your stamina bar. In the center of that is your health. The three little circles down at the bottom represent your, your hunger, your exhaustion, and whether or not you're freezing. Really like the way you uh, trek through the snow in this. Really cool effect. As we move on, we're going to drop off this ledge here. Make our way a little further. Blizzard's really starting to pick up, and that can uh, freeze you a lot quicker. Just gonna climb up this furry ground here, and let's ring what they're calling bells in this game. Let's ring that bell. Nothing bad's gonna happen today, right? Okay, something bad's gonna happen today. <laughs> This is the first boss fight. This is what this game's really about, taking down hulking gods. This is where it shines. It's all about the boss battles in this game. So, we use the hookshot real quick to propel ourselves up towards about the middle of the body. You could also climb the legs if you prefer, but climbing uses stamina, so you wanna you know, take the shortest path up there. So now I'm gonna climb up his fur. And you're going to see him try to shake me off here. When he does, you're going to want to spam right click here to try to reduce the impact it has on your stamina. And then when he's not shaking, you want to ring the bells on him. Little like pylon pillar type of thing. And if you fill up that... Oh, he's shaking me again. If you manage to fill up the circle on that little pad on them, that spot is destroyed. If you destroy all the spots on the boss, the boss dies. So that's our goal. With that spot destroyed, work my way towards the next spot but as you see the stamina bar in this the circular stamina indicator there is getting real low if that goes to zero I will drop off fortunately I'm not able to reach that ledge and rest on it and drop down but no worries I can just hook shot back up up there and make my way towards the, the next target on his body
I'm going to shut up for the rest of this fight and let you guys enjoy this one. One heck of a boss fight. The first boss down, let's proceed on and show you a little bit more about what this game has to offer. The game offers some awesome world traversing options. You can scale walls, obviously you saw the hookshot option before, and there's one other thing I'm going to show you. I don't want to spoil it. Let me get up to the top of this here. Let's make that our goal. Yeah, you can glide. Pretty cool. Can't do it forever, it drains your stamina, so you wanna make sure that you land before you run out of stamina, otherwise you'll be plummeting to the ground and you will definitely die. But as you can see, you can pretty much climb whatever you want. If you can see, if you see some wall, like a textured type of uh, building or whatever it may be, debris, you can scale it. Really like that.
those hook shot pads over there will allow us to pull ourselves to that, but that's slightly out of range, so let's glide towards this way. And we can hook a shot ourselves up from here. These crates can be broken. If I had a melee weapon, they'd break a lot faster. But when you break them, you'll get some supplies. Got some food in there and some crafting materials, which I will show you in just a bit how we can use those. So this is an optional area you can, you know, bring yourself up to. And if you look around in the world, the world's filled with hidden items that really, really reward players for trying to find those secrets. So more supplies and one of these little collectibles we'll call them. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, like a relic. When you get three of them, you can use them for a nice upgrade, which I'll show you in just a bit. Really love the uh, world traversing in this game. I'm going to pull a bow and some arrows. Now it's out of that body, and let's give this bow a shot. Bow is pretty inaccurate right now. As you see, the circle is quite large, which means her accuracy is pretty poor. Very difficult to hit these targets. So close. More supplies. Beautiful world, huh? I really, really like this. All right, let's go. And this controls quite well the hang gliding type of maneuverability. It's just, you can really pick exactly where you want to go. You don't like fly over the point where you're trying to go. You can kind of hover a little bit and just let yourself slowly descend. So it, it's it's nice. Feels good. It's not clunky, the movement. And that's good because you need these the type of comfortable maneuverability when it comes to these boss fights in this game. Finally move that crate. This is cool. You can sleep using the, uh, the cot or the roll, whatever you want to call it, little bed, to... Get some rest and increase your stamina recoverability. We just got a melee weapon and another one of those relics, which will mark our third relic on the character. Which is cool, because I can show you what it does right now. If I hit this plus, I can choose whether I want to get a boost of stamina or health. I'm going to choose stamina in this case. You're going to see an additional circle begin to form. And as you collect them, you'll get stronger. More stamina, more health. There's also lore throughout the game, if you want to find those and maps. You can see like a little side quest got marked on the map there, a little red X. If you go there, you'll get goodies, depending obviously on which uh, which map, which side quest you kind of picked up. Could be supplies and more weaponry, relics. Come on, we can kill this boar. There we go. So, boar down. The game does have animals placed throughout it, rabbits, stuff like that, boar that you can grab uh, supplies from. Now if we go check our inventory here, our equipment, you'll see some armor. Chest piece, gloves, boots. We can choose to spend our resources here to upgrade the gear, which will give us more defense and some more resistance to freezing. That's the shield and the snowflake. You see the weapon, the club. We can choose to break it down, drop it, equip it, repair it. Got two bows here, some arrows. This is uh, two hook shots that we have. And some supplies, our food, stuff like that. We can eat that for to fill our hunger, to help our health regen. Potions. Bedroll. There's also cooking as well, but we're going to go to sleep. And our rest bar went up a lot more, as you can see on the right. 
which will help our stamina regen, which is very, very important during longer fights. Alright, one more boss. I'm going to show you one more boss. I'm not going to spoil the fight for you. Massive. And the game has quite a lot of bosses for you to conquer. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay for Pray for the Gods, but as with all early access games, we're going to take a look at the community and developers and make sure that they're handling the game properly. Because as you can see, yes, early access came to Steam January 31st, 2019. First thing I took a look at was the discussions to see if there's any concerns the community has and whether or not the developers are responding. I'm happy to see here that the developers do indeed respond to any issues the community has. And I'm also happy to say the community doesn't have much issues other than, hey, you know, are we still on track? Or, you know, where, what updates do we have? Here the dev responded, posted, posting their uh, roadmap that they're hosting on their own site. So this is theirs. And as you can see, these are all the finished things, but on the right, the yellow is, there are things they're still working on. So they're adding boss 7 and 8, so two more bosses, and the game is supposed to release early this year, 2021. So we're, uh, the dev says they're on track, which looks good. Quarter 1, 2021 is what they're scheduled for. Love it. Um, another question here, roadmap update. Dev responded the very same day. December 21st was the post. He responded the same day just less than an hour after. Super cool to see them being active for their community to answer any questions or concerns. Love it, love seeing it. One thing I could uh, complain about a little bit here is the news posts have been a little lacking on Steam. September 28th was the latest news post, which is strange because they're, they're active. They didn't really abandon the community or anything. So they're there, it's just, I guess they don't really like to use the news posting feature as much. Here we can see uh, they were discussing their, their photo mode that they added to the game. Looks really cool. The right side of the screenshots are the ones that they uh, they tweaked using their photo mode. Really cool. I like that. The only issue I really had with, with this game was a couple of crashes. Uh, not even a couple. It was, uh, yeah, it was two. It was two during uh, a specific boss fight. I hope you guys enjoyed that first video on Pray for the Gods. We're going to come back to this game in about six months. We'll take a look, give you an update, see what happened with it, see if the devs followed through with updates, and uh, well, yeah, we'll go from there. Before I end the video, you know i got to plug this thing. RTX 3080, if you would like to win this, head to OathboundGaming.com and enter today. If you happen to miss this giveaway by the time you view this video, we probably have something else going. So go ahead and take, that, take a look. Go to OathboundGaming.com. I'm sure you'll find something good going on. And uh, yeah, please hit that like button, subscribe. If you like that little bell thing notification when a video gets posted, please, please click that. Definitely helps us. I always appreciate your support. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Skidah!